my own awareness about the links of agriculture and water came with the study of the Green Revolution in 1984. I realized then that the Green Revolution, which is made to look like a miracle from miracle seeds, as they were called, and miracle chemicals, was really the result of more water being used. Ten times more water is used in the Green Revolution to produce the same amount of food as you would in ecological farming. Where does that water come from? Firstly, it comes from surface irrigation, which is dams. And so you have the Bhakra Dam, which was called the Temple of Modern India by Nehru when he was inaugurating it. That these would be the temples of modern India. But what does a dam do? It submerges large tracts of land. Now, the word for settlement in Urdu is Abadi, because Ab is water. Abadi is around the water, the people who settle around the water. So some of the most prosperous civilizations have been drowned to build dams. Our Tehri is one example. The Tehri was the capital of our region. It was the most important trading center for these mountain areas. It's underwater today. And an entire artificial township called New Terry has been built, which reminds me of that very famous song, you know, uh, houses built of ticky-tacky and they all look just the same. Uh, it's absolutely like that, houses built of ticky-tacky and a historic town drowned. Up in, uh, above the Punjab, which was the land where the Green Revolution was introduced, on the Sutledge, you see the drowning of the old town of Bilaspur. I traveled there this year in a climate pilgrimage and the temples of this town were coming back because there was no water, there was no rain, there was a drought and all these temples had been drowned and the entire town. The Bhakra Dam submerged entire villages and settlements. So you destroy civilizations in the name of creating irrigation for the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution has been put on such a high level. It's become the new, it has replaced the story of Bhagirath and his penance with the, the mythology of the Green Revolution because it is a mythology. It's not a science. They talk of miracle seeds. They talk of feeding India. All they did was put more water and more land under rice and wheat and you're going to get more rice and wheat. And we've done calculations that show we'd have had exactly that much rice and wheat with organic farming if we'd had that much land and that much irrigation for the crops that were provided to Punjab. The second place where water comes is from the ground. Now, if it's surface water and you intensify the irrigation, put 10 times more, then you're putting more than the land can absorb. So what you're getting in Punjab in the southwest areas is water logging. The water is building up because you can't drain it out. You're putting so much water in, it's not getting drained out. So you've lost 10% of Punjab to a waterlogged desert because when you have too much water, you can't grow crops. Then you've got other areas where you're drilling tube wells. And again, the World Bank used the notion of primitive. They said, if you use renewable energy to get water out of the ground, it's primitive. As a child, whenever I traveled throughout northern India, we saw Persian wheels, these amazing devices with, with cans. And at 10 feet, they would pick up the water. The water was available at 10 feet, no matter where you are. The Rajasthan Desert, in Punjab, in Bihar, UP, everywhere, 10 feet of water. And Persian wheels dotting the entire land. Or you had these human operated things like a lever, you know, a pail would go into the well and then you'd step on the pedal and the pail would come up and you'd just put it in a little channel. That was protective irrigation. We used irrigation, but in minor quantities, not to flood our fields. The Green Revolution started this huge flooding. So when you couldn't get surface irrigation, you started to make tube wells. And the World Bank didn't just encourage tube wells, it forced tube wells. I remember in the region of Maharashtra, the government had asked me to Come and see why are we constantly running out of water. We spend more and more money on providing water, for drinking water, to villages. And every year, more villages are no source villages, as they call them. So I did this study, and in the process, studied all the policies. 
and found out in 72 they'd had a drought. And the World Bank said, no, we won't give you water for deepening your open wells from where people can manually take water out. We will only give you water uh, alone for deep energized tube wells that run with electricity or diesel. And you will have to stop growing millets, which use 250 millimeters of water. You will have to start growing sugarcane, which uses 2,500 millimeters of water. Because sugarcane is a cash crop, which means more cash is generated. And the World Bank is always looking at how to create commercial activity to repay lo pay loans. When people have sorghum, they eat the sorghum. So living rivers don't generate returns for the World Bank. Dams do. Millets don't generate returns for the World Bank, sugarcane does. And so that we've been pushed step by step into a, a material culture of water, excessive use of water, leading to the death of water both through dam building and mining of aquifers. But then because you're using this excessive water for chemicals, the chemicals get dissolved in the water. Your groundwater is full of chemicals. Your, um, Rivers are now full of water. I have carried a newspaper item today on something we have known, but it's the first time the media is carrying it, of a cancer train that leaves Punjab. Every day, 50% of the people on this train are cancer victims. And they go to Rajasthan because the Jains long ago opened a cancer hospital, which is a charitable hospital where you can be treated for free. But at the end of it, the cycle leaves disease for humans. But I think the cultural shift is equally important. The cultural shift is important because when a farmer goes to a field and has to use his or her own labor to pull those five buckets of water out, the care they give to the farming is a different care. The care they give to the water is a conservation culture. I've just been in tribal areas in Maharashtra, beautiful farms. The tribals carry water on their shoulders, one mile, and nourish each plant as if it was their own child. So you get a different kind of agriculture. When you are careless with water, as the Green Revolution made us careless, farming becomes careless. And Punjab is an example of careless farming where pesticides now are taking a toll on people themselves. And as carelessness grows, other implications happen. When I first studied the Green Revolution, I formed, found advertisements on female feticide. You know, come and abort your female fetus. Why have a girl? And today, we know 30 million girls haven't been allowed to be born. And most of them are in the areas where the Green Revolution kind technology has entered. Because when everything is a commodity, then nothing has value. Even human life doesn't have value.